Hello everyone, thanks for coming to this talk. Today I will try to talk to you about different perspectives about the CI CD a little bit. These are none of these things is not exist anymore. We know everything, but just slightly different opinions about it. Before starting, I'm Ali, I'm working in a Kest AI as an individual contributor. And if I you know summarize myself to you, when I look in the mirror, I saw a revolutionarist. I will be you know automation guy who needs to automate everything and who comes to IT world to change the everything. But probably when from the outside perspective, you will see this meme, the old man yelling the cloud and always blaming something or always trying to chime how to things going to work. So that's basically me. So my colleagues probably have same feelings about me yelling them, this is not right, we need to automate. And before starting, one more stop. Disclaimers, you know, when you bought, think about when you bought a new microwave and you, so you are starting reading the user manuals and then there's a weird warning about it's not suitable for the drying animals. And you start wondering, why should anyone put that warning in a user manual? That's not against the nature. This is that kind of slide. And background story for this one. There was a road trip to the Foss Dam with three of my friends. We were bored, and I made a mistake with my friend, and we make a pitch about one of the upcoming talks to him. And that talk traumatized really bad. From that point of time, we have a disclaimer section to what you should not expect from this talk. So let's continue. First, we are talking about CI, CD, and automation. There is no one fit for solution all. See, when we are talking about this, kind of topic, it depends about the product, team, and your availability and what you are trying to achieve. So we can't say there is a, one of the best practices exist for all. It could be not suitable for you. And here we are talking about really specific issues about the complexity and the challenges we are having. If you don't have these challenges, you don't need to apply these practices. If the simple and what you have is enough for you and happy, and that should be working. And as I said before, there is no perfect solution. The every solution has its pros and cons. And since we are not able to choose, best we can do is which consequences we can live on when we make this decision. So all of these based on which sufferings it's okay for me. And as I said, this is personal opinions mostly, so these are not the perfect solutions. There should be better than this one. If you are thinking you have better idea, I would gladly listen to you after talk and I would get your opinions. Just before starting point, let's start a quick interactive. Who is daily basis looking for CI CD or looking, working with the CI CD? Yeah, pretty decent. And a little bit ancient, who hurt Jenkins? Jenkins. And who's still using Jenkins? Oh, I'm too sad for you. And one final question. Who's happy and really happy with current CI CD solution? As you are legend, please find me and teach me this way of the happiness. Because to, you are too rare. And even here, more than one. Because one of my previous talks, only one from the hundreds is using that. I need to learn because every time I do something, I'm trying to immediately start to suffer what we are not happy. Maybe I'm looking for a different perspective. Maybe I need to find happiness for somewhere else. That could be it. That could be my issue. We will see. But before coming this everything, since we are talking about CI, CD, and automation, and first we need to understand what is your daily life and development style. And I will take you a little bit journey of time from starting my junior days. So since this is beginning of my career, most related my, my career events, but when we look in the prehistoric era before the CIC, the, I, yes, I'm that old. And when I first started the you know, business as a junior engineer, I was working in a telco industry. And we were working in a product in a real time. We were managing application layer seven traffics and control and manage them. So I was part of the technical decision after a couple of years. You know, I was feeling like a superstar. I was managing the 10 millions of the users in real time, which, you, you know, are they watching the 
YouTube videos or are they using the Skype or anything? And I can control them. So I was feeling like superstar. I was changing the world. And, but before that, but in that time, we were much more simpler landscape. When you have an ap application, you need to buy your hardware according to your specs. Then you need to deploy it manually. We were using Java Tomcat stack, like old guys. So I was developing, testing, packaging, sending this package to the network, and deploying manually by myself. So even if I feel myself a superstar, I was just a junior engineer. I was making mistakes. I was missing the test. I was making a typo in the URLs. So what happened? All 10 million has interrupted in the internet traffic. And I even heard from the, my manager, do we need to check, double check your work again? Can't you do proper work? So in that time, from this question, I started to do myself. I have a reliability issue. I'm making a mistake because I'm junior. Since I can't make it my personal like 100% all the time, I need to find solution. And in that time, first, I saw Hudson. Then there was a new branch called Jenkins. And that was it's similar to this scenario. That was discovery of fire for me. Because I was removing the biggest reliability issue on the network myself. I can write a base script, automate some stuff, and everything is going to work. Because in that time, in my development period, that was what I need, just an automation from a CI CD. And that time in CI CD happened and entered my life. But after that, with the containers and images happened, everything became much more simpler. Then we have a common interface about the deploying and managing everything. And suddenly, all of the things became so much faster. Now, after the you know, Docker images, we have you know, container orchestration, Kubernetes happened, then cloud came, became being, we don't need to buy our own hardware. We can use SaaS, PaaS, or other types of clouds to just hire, and everything became much more simpler. That simplification allowed us faster workloads, different deployments, and we could have more time. With less effort, we can do more. But what is the cons about it? Since we said everything has the pros and cons, cons our development workflow it started to become more and more complicated. Today, I'm my title generally cloud infrastructure engineer. I'm working developing the Kubernetes-based platforms, and we need to, on average, hundreds, you know, almost 100 services needs to organize together and everything work together and development workflow even more, you know, problematic because we have a one development machine and I need to replicate and turn the workflow to able to work you know, normally. And when we look from when we are talking about CI, CD stuff, this is from last year October's report. 73 billion minutes for only public projects is automated only in GitHub Actions. So we are talking about tremendous amount of workloads is running CI, CD every minute. But even we reach the you know, futuristic era when we are looking for the containers and building a product as similar in that video, we are still working time to time as a caveman because we are still using some ancient technologies and some kind of glue code behind. It doesn't evolve in further that. So it's hit some certain limitations. And when you look about the you know, challenges of our CI CD today, First, increasing complexity over time. What does that mean? It means when we are starting a coding, you have a simple application. What you need probably, like you are seeing as an example YAML here, we have a build task, test, and it continues linting. And it's less, less than 100 lines of code. That's OK. We can create it in a matter of minutes, because this is template exists in all of the you know, providers like GitLab, GitHub. And you start working and focus on what your product really is, because automation part already solved. This is what you need in the beginning. But what happens over time? You are gradually descending in the chaos. What happens? You need one more job. You decided to use microservices and split the job. Then I'm going to say, OK, we need to something to deliver. No need to focus on the CI CD, because CI CD is not our product. It's just an automation. Just copy-paste. We have a deadline to meet and continue. 
and this will be increased over time. What happened? Something flaky, and we have a deadline or other issues. Okay, stabilize the CI/CD because this is not, again, this is not a product, and continue. And over time, after a long time, we are not realized like these frogs. We are not realizing we are starting the boiling. After the first bubble came up, we are starting to realize this is a real life story from last week. I just tried to build a directory that contains document files and create an internal static website. What I do is build a directory, upload as an artifact. But I touch the forbidden YAML. And these numbers are really real. And I had 82 jobs. These 82 jobs only exist in the merge request and allowed to run. I have more in the background. They will run after the merge. So I need to run over 100 jobs. And amount of the tests, yes, we are a good company. We are making test-driven development. Every time working hard to writing tests. But almost 12,000 tests for a single run just to build a static website because I touched the GitLab YAML. And this is not the worst. The worst is coming. Because this is GitLab, we have multiple people. We have a merge train. We don't need to wait. What happened in the merge train, if you don't know? When you're enabling the merge train, you can say, merge enable the merge train, and your merge request is getting a queue. When it's getting the line, CICD runs again. So now I had 82 jobs became 164. And my test count is almost 24,000. But this is not the worst yet. Merge train only can once run once. Even one failure needs to block the old PR. I need to change PR itself. And hoping to uh, someone will merge code to the main so I can rebase and push without changing anything. So, but this failure is going to connection timeouts. NPM package not found or something, or rate limiting from the Docker. Everything can happen and block this one. And thankfully, I wasn't that lucky. I am able to merge this in a port time. It means more than 600 jobs and 100,000 lines of tests, well tested document sites, just able to merge one single change. And it cost me more than four hours after finish, just waiting the pipeline execution. What is next? And push and pray, that's a really, I think, is there anyone doesn't really happen when you're working CI CD? You need to change something, but it's not able to execute it in locally. You don't have. So you need to push, but you are not sure, you are not a little bit not able to remember everything correctly. You are changing one thing at a time, and you are trying to do your best. And you know, I have literally real commit. If it is not going to work, I will become a goat farmer. That was I, how I feel about in that time. But is it finishing in this point? Unfortunately not. There's a configuration drift. Since we talk about we are not able to run everything locally when the CI CD, then I need to find some way to run it locally. I can write bash scripts, make files, or other languages has other tools. But I have a configuration. In the, especially in the Golang world, I created a you know, simple action just to catch up time. I put a version there and match with my local development make file or in Nix or whatever you are using. I have two versions at the moment. And some genius look their go local development code and update it in CI C and forgot the local development doesn't have the correct value and miss something. But nobody's realized and we are running two different versions at the moment. Or this could be happening. Someone try to be, make, be clever and try to write a make file. And in the make file, they use JQ or some other CLI. But in the macOS, we have one version. And in the Linux, we have another. And they have tiny bit differences working differently. And it's really, really hard to catch. So we have a configuration drift. And now my CI CD pipeline have configuration drift. I tested locally, everything is green, but CI CD is failing. What I'm going to do, I will, I will just push the CI CD is wrong and push the platform team. They need to handle care because it's lo working locally. They should, but they said everything is fine, so I need to start debugging. How am I going to debugging in GitHub Actions? Good luck with that. There's a ways, but I don't want to dwell in that, you know, 
abomination. Handling the upgrades. Now you have multiple versions in your local machine, your scripts, your bash files, and even more complicated logic. Thousands of YAMLs has different versions in different services. You need to upgrade it. Good luck with that. Even, even if you are automate this one, depend about and renovate, they will still get in conflict between each other. It's not working all the time. You need to still go to the manual intervention and make some updates. And this is one of the ugly truths I don't really like. CI CD is just a way to automate, and people tend to one shot operation. When they run and see the first green, they will abandon it until fail constantly. They are, we are even ignoring the flag issues. If we, it's able to pass in second time, just hit the rerun. No need to go and refactor it. And you decided what you do in pipelines is not correct. You want to change it, but good luck. You have more than, more than 100 jobs at the moment. And you need to ask time for um, your manager. And your, how long it takes? Probably months. Good luck with getting that and making this one without breaking anything. That's almost impossible. And one of the biggest challenges here, breaking the vendor locking. You choose GitHub or GitLab. And the CICD must much more easier to entrance. And you write everything according to that specification. But then suddenly you choose other providers will be better for you. Everything is perfect, but now you need to have six months to rewrite everything from one CI CD to another. And you need to validate this idea costing multiple people six months without any business in this industry. Probably it's, it's not going to happen. So from all of these problems, what we learned? YAML, just a markup language. It's not a programming language. It has limited reusability and recomposability. Yes, it has anchors, and you have make able to clever tricks, but it's still not programming language. I can't put in logic inside. It's when it became harder. Yes, in simple cases, it's too easy to understand, right? But what we do in generally, we are just writing a configuration. And this configuration almost tightly coupled the system we are vendor we are using. And vendor is trying to make a workaround when we are making these changes. So I'm writing vendor specific configuration. Even it's getting big, I can split and I do some tricks for the main table. Too. Still, I'm just writing a vendor configuration in thousands of lines. And second, bash, hidden pitfalls. Yes, we are arguing after, you know, one of the most arguable conversations here. Because one side, bash, is old, magical, dependent on system behavior, and almost impossible to review because you can miss lots of things. And for me, I'm not confident enough to reviewing two or three lines of bash when I compare to thousands of lines of your know, programming code. Because I don't understand enough to inner workings. I don't understand inner, you know, what kind of system they have. But some people prefer the bash because you, you can do much really magical stuff in three lines of code. And then we argued about the you know, coding versus bash script. And one friend has told me he'd prefer the bash because it's much more simpler, easier to maintain. And when I ask, how do you manage the other contributions and pull requests? And the answer is, nobody allowed to touch my bash files. That will be their last day. So if you are ever that you know, leverage in your company or in your work, yeah, good luck, you can use it. But in my case, if someone just go to your bash file, copy paste to another, make a, some minor changes to become a you know, bash file heaven, let's say, it's not going to work out. And when we see the about configuration of everything, after containers orchestrating cloud, we have development and CNN not that different. They have much more common, and we need to replicate current issues only locally runnable files or only running in CI CD, but most of the things what we are doing, building, starting, linting, and testing, there are, there are lots of common grounds. We don't need to you know, fragment this. And this fragmentation workflow is having an inefficiencies because I was literally writing a Kubernetes platform, and I need to write a test in the test with the different combinations of the cloud providers, what is installed before. 
I have more than 200 combinations to test in end-to-end -end testing, and they will read write most of this in a bash file, in locally. But in CI/CD, that was something running differently. It's almost impossible to change or maintain. And as, as I said, it's really hard to avoid the configuration drift because not everyone just echo, not everyone see the other services and other make files. It's hard to find. If someone adds something in a bash file or some inside of YAML as a string, it's so hard to de detect. And push and pray. If you are not able to, add, this is one of the most common workarounds we are applying. If it's in this, in this EI, we are not pushing in local, and we are just pushing and waiting CI to return. And whenever they are asking me where are your idle, I'm just waiting CI CD to run and green. And if it's green, it should be reliable and we can merge the request without thinking second thought. And in the next part, what we see is here. This is increased topic as a, you know, X as a code in last years became increasing and even the KubeCon Solomon Hikes is told about software building is just a factory and we need to create a better factories and I really like that code and understanding. What we need in a, this complicated environment has more granular control in complex environmental logic. I don't need to maybe run 80, 100, 82 jobs in a taste. If I have more dynamic logic or more sustainable things, I could run in locally on CI, CD on much more smaller scales because I can understand or I can generate this one is dynamically. So what we are going to talk about you know, as a solution, as a dagger. What, what is the dagger? Dagger is a CI CD engine which is able to run in your local development code. What does it mean? Yeah, CI CD code is not in a new field. It's exist for a long time. But what is failed there previously because they were only meant to own single language. So it meant fragmentation between the different languages. But how this tool is working is it's able to generate its client code as a CDK to the language you are using in your application. So I can, if the front-end team needs to use this one, I can translate and write their modules in t TypeScript or JavaScript. Or if they are using Python or Golang, we can convert this one. And I can call cross-language compilation here. So we have a Dagger engine in the background doing all the magical you know, calculations, with, which they call DAG, dependence acro directed acrylic graphs, and between the SDKs. But more, more magical things in the things called you know, in, the, in the Dagger words. So in the Dagger words, they called, they are have functions and modules written by the other people. You can think about, GitHub actions, custom GitHub actions, or some other modules from other things. They, ha you, they have, people can write their own modules in their language and put the function based on that and allowing you call in your pipeline. It creates reusability and cross-language reference. And with that, you don't need to discover everything. Or as a platform team with different perspective about in the companies, platform team can create simple set of tools used by standard DX for the whole company, and all teams can use the standard interface to build on their stuff on top of that. And if we talk about you know, these types, most important part is when you run this in, in your local environment or CI CD, it's just identical. The result will be exactly the same. So you don't need to worry about the configuration drifts, only CI CD runs or com overcomplicated. And as I said, this is a multi-language. So the best part for me, we can give, okay, we can give is this for all the teams. Since we have five minutes, I lose myself in the time. I will just quickly switch here for the demo part. Okay. But still, yes, and in, in this application, we have just simple, ap most simple application is just try to create, you know, handle function the router here for create a web page. And in the first phase, what we are doing, this is one of, the one of the my make files I use for the, all of my projects, just adding these simple steps like that. If I run this one, I have 
simple step. And let's say, when I say make run, and let's go to the here. I just create the version, and it was based on local. It's not a something complicated. And when we looked at our workflows, it's just same configuration I just shared. Two different scripts need two different maintenance periods. And if we apply to, let's check out it here. Now I have a module called dagger, and I have one dagger JSON. This is definition of my module here and CI CD. It's showing name, which SDK I generated, and all of the code is auto-generated, and I write something new here. Wha I create a just a module entry, and initialization part is here. What I do here, I'm just taking two different sources here. One of them, the source code, you can put your local source code here to test, or you can set the remote branch request here to test it in remotely. And what I did, I just implemented as same as I was creating a container from, let's start from here. I have a Golang container here from, I'm parsing the using Go mode file to make sure I'm using the same version. And I add the caching on top of this one, work directory and mounted directory. What I use, I'm reusing this code in my up as a here, I have a built lint and test workflows working exactly the same. And to able to use all the developers in the same DX, what I do is the next, I just replace my targets with a dagger calls. So as a developer, let's stop here. When I say make, everything will be the same. But when I say make run, Let's make debug as well. Now it started, this one is a container and it built it and port forward to my container itself. And still it's working as the same. But how does it look like in our CI CD? This is, let me highlight this one. This is just a you know, simple pipeline definition. What I'm giving here, I'm giving remote module location here, not check out anything in my local CI CD. And I'm passing the reference about that Git ref. And what I'm going to next is giving the command what I want to do as a build. And if we look at it will just run exactly the same code in the CI CD as well. So before pushing, I can use my local testing here to validate, and when I pushed, just a double check. I don't need to think about it twice. And since I s talk about the modules and the reusability, as a next step in my another branch, I just updated because in my previous one, I was installing Git, Git, lint, Git lint in manually. So what I see, there is a module reliable enough for me to use in the code. So I import that module local in my dagger JSON, and I change my, where is my linting code? Here, here. I just change this code from the calling with the correct options to run. So someone is already create and maintain this code for me. I just root and make it programmatically. Let's return to the presentation. And you can reach the demo app and I will update slides here as well from the GitHub repository from the, this QR code and check out later. But 
sorry about the losing time. A little bit demo is tightly scheduled, but basically that's the difference. Do you have any questions? Yeah, the here is the dagger has how it, sorry. The question is how do your local system and CI, CD is working together at the same version? So basically what we are creating is a set of instructions called directed acrylic graph. So I'm not executing code directly. I'm giving and creating a directed acrylic graph from my container image and step to produce it in my locally and Dagger engine responsible for the executing that and containing it. Since my instruction is similar to the building Docker file, it's just following in the same manner and continues. Since it's using the build kit in the background, it can calculate the layer hash and even cache that exact step and not execute it if it's not changed. OK, as first question, how does it get the ch file changes or the my code? How does it get to which part of code to execute? Which modules to execute? OK, which modules to, how to get it, which modules to execute? And second question? Which uh, platforms it supports? Uh, OK, as let's start with the easy one. Since this is, you know, Dagger engine can be run in locally as a Docker image or remotely, you can run this code whenever you can run Docker image. So it can be run all CI, CD, or all developer machines. There is no restrictions about that. Maybe you need to write some glue code or some module to make it some automation in some level, but it's, you can write it. I'm, I use this Dagger is GitLab and GitHub actively. Even I have a personal project to run in GitHub, GitLab, GitHub actions directly inside of the Dagger as well in a reverse manner. About the, in the first question, in how to know which module it use. So there is a first thing. In the Dagger JSON, I have a source field in here. When I go to the execute Dagger command in the directory in Dagger JSON, it looks this directory to look what to execute, like When I said Dagger help, it reads my functions and library, and it gives me all the modules I can execute. Or I can have a parameter called slash m or slash mod to run it. Let's make it something a little bit more interesting. I went outside of my home directory. And here, I just calling from my directory directly in my repository as well. I don't have anything locally. And when I execute this one, it will just give me the same command. And even I can make what is it? It reached my remote repository pull my old de Dagger definitions, and also get my main branch of the same code base and get it built and run. And it's able to run it here as application. Yes. And even when you are importing a module from outside, it's generating a code based on your module and gives you the interface to use it in your code directly. And this code is for your autocomplete and ID. This is exist as Dagger Django, but you don't need to push in the, your Git. It can create automatic. This is just only to give autocomplete from your ID. One more question. Uh, 
They're currently, as far as I know, they are working on an air gap installation. But still, this is currently rely on the pulling images outside. This is the only definition for able to pull the modules or images you need to have internet connection. But they are working, but that's not a release as a feature yet. Uh, yes, you can install, there is a hand chart for the Kubernetes. You can pull this one as a Kubernetes with the caching configurations and give as your CI CD as a you know, reliable source of the about caching and work. No, no, yeah, everything running in the container. This is you know, one of the pros and cons about this one. This is running in a container. You don't need to any other dependence from your system, but this is running in a container. So most of the tools we are using relying on local host support. Sometimes you are not able to run or containerize some tools because they are relying on some operating system level features. Is it dependent on Docker? They can use Podman, but it's using Docker build kit. So it's based on Docker build kit. And now we are out of time. Thank you for coming.